I tell you what, if, if they'd have disallowed they, that, that I'd, I'd have walked out, I'd have been gone. <laughs> uh, my head was going to that, go. Ex that's exactly what was said in the match of the day. Yeah. If and, they and disallowed this goal, I'm done with it. There was like three people said that in the office when we watched that. Hello and welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, uh, Alan Shearer and Micah Richards. Yes, the trio are back together. Um, Alan's up in Manchester, ready to do Match of the Day 2 because it's Sunday evening and Micah's actually here with me at home because he was at Chelsea. He's jumped on the back of a motorbike after making his way from Stamford Bridge after a busy day. Um, for both of you, but for, for you, Mike, I'm blimey, because you're flying off later. Can we talk well. about my commitment to this, please? <laughs> yes. Oh, honestly, I've got a flight in about an hour, but I'm here with the boys. And I don't know what Alan's going to analyse tonight, because I've already done it all, Alan. What are you going to do today? Must have been a big bike to get your arse on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've missed you guys. How are we? We're, we're well. We're yeah. well. It's good, it's, good, yeah. it's good to have you back. Um, cool, blimey, what a game of football you you watched. Well, we all watched it, but you were actually there in the stadium. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was so excited on air. I was thinking, okay, Man City, Chelsea, what is the game going to offer in terms of, are, are Chelsea going to show everyone what they can do? Because I've said it and I've said it on this many times before, Alan, that Chelsea are showing something just in the final third. And one day it was all going to come together. And today was that day. Cole Palmer, Ooh. Raheem Sterling, it, even Jackson yeah. up front. Yeah. The atmosphere at the stadium was incredible. Mm. Even when Chelsea uh, went behind after Rodri scored what looked like was going to be the the winner. Then to come back, yeah. it was just extraordinary. What a game of football! Yeah, it was it was incredible. And I mean, both teams were absolutely going all out for the win as well, which you don't always see, do you? Um, particularly so with teams open, against City. It? Yeah. So so open. I mean, it, it, the game just had everything. It was from mm. start to finish. It was entertaining, and there was so many impressive performances. Particularly from guys in the, in in the Chelsea shirt. I mean, mm. Mike has already mentioned him. Cole Palmer, um, Gallagher. I thought was superb. Raheem Sterling. Yeah. Oh, you watching Gareth Southgate? That performance I had all over it. Mm. No doubt about it. So it was. Yeah, Jackson. I agreed. I mean, I was pretty. I don't know. Critical of his lack of movement a few weeks ago. Maybe but, he was. Maybe he was listening and watching now. Maybe he's taking well, it on board. Well, well, I got I got a text from uh, from Chelsea to say that um, they didn't um, they didn't think it was over the top, and they've been working on one or two things in and around that. So um, he was a lot better today. Obviously, yeah. full of confidence after what happened earlier in the week, uh, and that showed today. So it was just a great game for everyone to watch, wasn't it? Who was your inside yeah. source at Chelsea, yeah. Alan? Can't tell you, Micah. Is that what you do to get everyone to love you? Basically, just have someone in every, at every club in the Premier League. <laughs> How pathetic are you, no, seriously? You, you know what it, no, you know what it is. When he's doing, like, after he's done match of the day, he then rings around all the players that if he's been a bit critical and say, I didn't, I didn't really mean it. Ah, yeah. Is he like, one who goes on Twitter and just says, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't mean it. You could have done this. <laughs> yeah. if, you have, if you want my number, text me. I can help you out. Embarrassment. <laughs> So, could you be the new centre forward coach at Chelsea then? Is that what no way? I would never leave you, lads. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Coaching at Ellen? <laughs> what happened the last time? Oh, leave me alone. God, dear. <laughs> um, but you, you can see real progress in Chelsea at the moment, can't you? Obviously, it followed that nuts game on Monday mm. against um, against Spurs, and then a performance like that against well probably the best team in the world, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, and I, I think for for the fans, I think that's really important to see. I mean, small steps uh, and, and all that. The coach, and we all know what Poch is like. He's a very, very good coach. Um, he was, he is the right man. We, we said that if if they were going to give him time to, to try and get his ideas across. And that looks as if it's, it's happening. And they're definitely improving. They definitely seem to be understanding what he uh, what he wants, and um, I mean the last two results have been really good for them. Yeah, it was interesting right at the end. I don't know whether you noticed, but uh, on the final whistle, um, um, Maurizio was very very angry, and he yeah. was charging across the pitch. I think he clearly wanted the tack to finish that they, that was in progress. 
and, and he was like raging. And then he saw Cole Palmer, he gave him a big hug and, and then he was all grinning and smiling. <laughs> it was like the biggest change of, the quickest change of he mood, was. I should say. I think I've probably ever seen it at the he end of the game. He was raging, wasn't he? He was yeah. raging he at, was, the, yeah. at the official or the referee, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then within a second, he calmed down. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. You're a big fan of Poch though, aren't you, Gary? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, having spent time with him um, in Qatar, as we all did, um, yeah. during the World Cup, um, he was... You know, because you don't really know unless you actually know someone, do you? You can look from outside and, and see that they're doing a good job, which he's, he's, he's always done. But um, And you met him before the start of the season, didn't you, Alan, for your, yeah. your column with The Athletic? And yeah. um, you, you were saying how impressed you are with him. Um, but he's just so likeable as well. Yeah, but you, yeah. you could see even at the end there, he's got that little bit of steel that I think all the top top coaches near. But he's, he's I think he's turned it round pretty quickly quickly at Chelsea now and I think with the confidence that will will be generated by the last two results um, mm. with really tough games will we'll, we'll serve them well and he's he's clearly bringing the best out of some of the players now there were a big improvement in 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 lots of the um, individual performances on the pitch but we talked about Cole Palmer and he looks a, I mean what a talented wow. young man have they, have they have they missed a trick Manchester City Micah do you think <laughs> letting him go it's such a good question because I, I would never have sold him just because I I knew what he could do, and I, and I remember telling you and guys you don't about need the money, Mike. Co- <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the thing the, the thing is with, with with Man City, they produce so many good players, and obviously they, they buy top players too. Mm. So you can't have everyone. Yeah. So I feel like if you can get four, I think it was forty two million that paid for him for someone who'd played. That not many games at Man City. It's so difficult for a youngster at Manchester City coming, particularly probably Manchester City, isn't it? Coming through the ranks because of the quality in the first team and not just mm. the first 11, but the, the probably 20 players at least to get the enough opportunities, enough playing time. But normally um, clubs put players like that with that much talent out on loan, don't they? It's it's the courage I like the most. Remember a couple of weeks ago when him and Sterling were, were fighting mm. over a penalty and he yeah. was like, no... I'm taking this. And then to take a penalty, I, I think it was on the 95th minute. You know, but t- getting the ball off a very experienced <laughs> top player international and having the kind of the balls to do that as well, and the confidence and his I'm, own ability. I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I, I think it was right for him because it's not like he's going to a team which are not going to challenge. He's got a great manager. He's at a club that are going to spend a lot of money and he's becoming the main man. He was never going to be the main man at Man City, we've talked so much about Foden and whether he can become that. And it's took Foden, he sort of dipped in form a little bit. He was played, excellent today. He played well he really today. Yeah. But when you've got Foden and, and Doku mm. and Grealish and Bernardo Silva and Alvarez, mm. he has to go and play. So I'm gutted, I'm devastated yeah. that he's not a Man City player, but I'm happy he's yeah. doing so well. Gary, you mentioned it there. That, I mean, can you imagine the pressure that's on him and the <laughs> penalty, nearly the last kick of the game against his former club, yeah. To get to get a point, I mean, there was there was no fear. The balls on him. I mean, it was the not not arrogance, the confidence, the 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 belief to say, "Give me the ball, will you? It's not a problem." And he was like calm as you like, and yeah. what an b- unbelievable penalty it was. And then his interview afterwards, what he yeah. said about his interview, he said, no, I don't really practice them, I just believe, <laughs> I just believe in my ability. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. I yeah. thought it was absolutely magnificent. Yeah. I, I, I love that confidence. He'll be, um, he must be close now to a call-up himself, I would think. He has to be. Yeah. It's, in, it's imperative. Yeah. Yeah. That has sort of be. player, playmaker, we've been asking for this sort of player for so many years. Now we've got an array of them. Mm. It's brilliant to see. What do you think his best position is? I think, well, all them players, Grealish, Foden, Palmer, want to play the number 10. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to play the number 10 when you've got someone like Kevin De Bruyne who plays it to a T and now Alvarez. I think... On the right for him is great because he can go both ways. I think in the, in the game we've seen today, there was a time when he went on the right hand side and then cross one in, but he can also go inside and link up the play. So I would say number 10, but also on the right coming inside. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, think, I think it's a great, it was the best thing for both parties at that time mm-hmm. because Man City got a great fee for him. And he got out and he's now playing regular first team football mm. and shining. And that wouldn't have happened at Man City. So it's, it's worked out well for both parties. Yeah, it certainly has. Um, we also mentioned um, 
earlier Raheem Sterling and sending a message to, to Gareth Southgate. <laughs> it's an odd one that, that <laughs> Sterling's not, not been in the squad uh, of late because Gareth's normally fiercely loyal and we've seen that, haven't we, with Maguire, with Phillips yeah. um, and, and players and, you know, obviously had a dip in form last season, but he's, he's, he's firing again now. Um, do you do you think there's there's something to it? Something's there's been a little on. fallout or something? Or? Something, something must have gone on. It must have. But what I would what I would come back at you and say, both of you, who would you leave out for him? Because you've got Foden, you've got Grealish, you've got Rashford, you've got Saka. So who who's going to be left out for him? Well, it, it's a, it's a very good point, but you know, you, you could squeeze him in. It's a big squad. You, you, could, you could squeeze him in, and yeah. we we talk about playing players. On form. Mm. So Rashford's not scored in the league this year. Sterling's been out, outstanding yeah. all season. So imagine playing for one of the top clubs, you're scoring and you still can't get in the England side. I just, Something's I, definitely happened. I, I, I'd be surprised if he, he wasn't around for the, the squad in, in the summer. And the other thing about Sterling that I'll say is that a lot, a lot of players don't necessarily turn up and play their best stuff at tournaments. And he has done. Um, mm -hmm. Particularly the last two tournaments, he's you know he's arguably been um, England's best player. So I mean I don't know whether you noticed today, but I counted at least five, I think six nutmegs that Sterling did in the game. Successful nutmegs. He did a couple honestly, earlier on, didn't he? Yeah, earlier no, on in the no, game. No, he did, honestly, if you, I don't know whether anyone else noticed, but it was like whoa, another one and another one and yeah. another one. <laughs> I think he's, 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 he's a megalomaniac. What, what do they call him in Spain? Is it Wapa? When a, Guapa, like, have you not seen it? That's that's beautiful. Is it? Oh, oh I must say it. I've seen it on the show. Guapa. Years ago, well, that's Guapa. a Guapa. for him because he's, he's, a, oh, he's, he's a bloke. It's Guapa bloke. for a, a masculine, Guapa for a feminine. Oh, okay. So there you go. A little lesson for History you. lesson as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you, you'll take that on board because you're about to go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm here to help, Micah. Oh. <laughs> 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 I mean, another two. I mean, we, you sort we sort of take it for granted now, don't we? But another couple of goals um, for Erling Haaland, um, including I think his second goal. I think it might have um, either went off his bollocks or his. <laughs> I mean, that's how good it this. Hold, yeah. hold on, I, I don't know if you guys <laughs> were watching the. Well, obviously, was watching the game, but did you see VAR? was looking at the incident mm. of where it touched him. So where he was lifting yeah, up his right arm. I know, and as, as and it was then, rolling across the line. Then, it was a, a, and they was looking at it. And they were still looking at it after the game as well. I mean, why? That's how insecure even, we are. Even if that time. ball had flicked his elbow as he slid across the line. I know. So what? I tell you what. If, if they'd have disallowed they, that, that I'd, I'd have walked out. I'd have been gone. <laughs> uh, my head was going to that, go. Ex that's exactly what was said in the match of the day. Yeah. Office. If and, they and disallowed downstairs. this goal, I'm fucking done with it. There was like three people said that in the office when we watched that. He I think he crossed the line before the ball. Exactly. I think I think a lot of people would probably get home saying if they disallowed this one. I mean, that I'm done. <laughs> it would have been uh, completely, completely absurd. But. Um, um, he's, he's, he just he just keeps scoring goals, doesn't he? Well, he's a machine. He's a goal machine. He'll continue to do that. There's no doubt he'll do that forever because he's great at it. Yeah. Um, do you think it was a penalty? I know that's it. There was a lot of goals scored after it, so you, we've all kind of forgotten it, but it was a very, very soft one. If the referee hadn't have given it, there's no way that no. VAR would have done it. It's one of those, Mike, wasn't I, it? I, I thought for once you were talking sense the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, explain it. What did I say, Alan? You actually I... said um, that you, you didn't think it was a howler. The referee gave it on the field, so you didn't think it was enough to overturn it. I mean, Agreed. Yeah, I think I think I that, agree. That, that, yeah, that, that, I mean, it was clear that um, that he was he pulled Cucurella first to get in yeah. front of him. He yeah. yanked his shirt to get in front of him, which obviously the referee didn't see. But was it a howler? Probably not. No, not enough to turn it over. I, I, I don't think it was the, a, a great decision. I actually thought the ref did pretty well in the game, but I don't think yeah. that was the right call. Um, I think, I mean, you, you can argue either way, but I thought Haaland was, it was 50-50 at one stage. They're fighting each other. But again, I agree with the overall thing that it wasn't one to, yeah. to, to turn yeah. over. Uh, yeah. Not at all. Yeah. So I, I think it's also good that, I mean, I know you'll 
disagree because you're you, you're a city man amongst the many other teams that you support. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's 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 good for the league, I think, as well that that they they drop points because I mean, as great as they are, we don't want to see them just run away with things, do we? And now we've got we've got you know Liverpool on their tail, Arsenal, mm -hmm. Tottenham have slipped a bit, obviously. Um, even Aston Villa are only what three points behind. Um, so, yeah, it is, I agree. I good, mean, it's good, still good very for, early, Good for but... the chasing pack. But, you know, I mean, there's been times when, as of now, I know there's an international break, but as of coming back from that, City have put their foot down and kicked on, haven't they? Just mm -hmm. whether they can whether they can do that again. But for the rest of the league, yeah. Um, but the, the, the three are there that we thought were going to be there, City, mm -hmm. Arsenal, Liverpool, aren't they? So, well, you mentioned Liverpool no there, Alan. Um, Mike was watching, we were watching other games because mm. they were on television. Liverpool was one of those because they played in the Europa League. They had to play on, yeah. a, on, a, on a Sunday. So um, you, you would have had an eye on that game. What, what were I they did. like? Yeah, they were good. There were, was never, never a time I thought that they were going to get anything other than three points. And the combination, which I'm doing on Match of the Day tonight, the combination between uh, Nunez and, and Salah worked perfect. It was a great understanding. Salah, another couple of goals. Um, yeah, they were they were comfortable. Van Dijk was back to his best. They had to. Allison made a couple of good saves actually, but it was a it was a it was a comfortable win in the end for uh, for Liverpool. Yeah. Which which of the sides now? I know we, we we've discussed this a few times before, but which of the chasing pack do you think are the most likely to to challenge City now? Still Arsenal, or I think Liverpool. I mean I Liverpool have you know, obviously had a tough season last year or last season, um, but you know they've been pretty consistent. I know they dropped a couple of points last week. I would say Liverpool. You would just, now, would you? Yeah, 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 just because of Salah. Mm -hmm. And by all accounts, Van Dijk had a really good game today, Alan. Yeah, he, he, did, just yeah, he, did. he just said it. He just said it. Yeah. Are you not listening to him? Mike? Did you say that? Sorry, I missed it. Yeah, I did, Mike. Listen, will you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I did say that. He did have a good game. Yeah, he, he looked back to his uh, back to his best. He read the game very well. And you're right. I think that. I mean, they're always going to score goals, Liverpool, with the talent they've got up top. Um, I, I I don't know whether you saw it um, yesterday. I was doing match of the day yesterday, and the interviews after the game, and, and Mikel Arteta was was yeah. wanting to make the point, and he said it in every interview because um, because <laughs> when we're doing match of the day, we have lots of screens, and we see all the interviews that they they do, whether it's to the press, whether it's to the um, various TV channels and uh, and stuff, and and he was and he said the same thing to. Every person. Are you not going to ask me about VAR? You're not going to ask me because they were really good today. And and let's have a bit of humour, shall we? Laugh at it. It's uh, uh, it's so mu it's so much easier when you've won, isn't it? I loved it. I love it. Yeah, I, I, it. I, I, I liked love it that. as well. I thought it was great. Um, it was it was it was sort of a nod to the fact that he probably went a bit strong. Yeah. The week before, I think. and he doubled down as well in the week as well. Uh, didn't well, he? yeah. Well, the well, the club did this the statement which we talked about in 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 the last um, yeah. episode. Um, okay, um, let's let's have a little breather. We'll take a break. Welcome back to the Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer, and uh, Micah Richards, who's uh, alongside me, um, which is um, always a thrill. It's fantastic <laughs> here, isn't it? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I don't like to bring it up, Alan, but oh, what's happened to your team? I mean, so, I mean, I must say that let's talk about getting injuries. It's funny. It reminded me of um, when Leicester were suddenly playing in Europe, and uh, it, it all got a bit much, and they, they, they had a similar kind of um, terrible injury list. And Mike, why are you giggling? At <laughs> why that grin off his face, will you? It comes on every week, boasting about two, two, <laughs> two. 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 <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, I can hear his silence and I love the tune. You know what the relationship between the tune have got? You only sing when you win. Exactly. <laughs> what's going on, Alan? Come on. I had, a, I had a bad day at the office, Mike. Yeah. They looked knackered they were, yesterday. They were they were terrible. They were awful. Um yeah, they've got a lot of injuries and suspensions, but they, they just never started. They just look they look mm. absolutely knackered. Mm. And the international break couldn't come quick enough for them. Because they need to get some bodies back in two weeks' time. Iriola start. It looks like he's starting to his, his pattern of play is starting to pay off a little bit. A couple so of wins I, in the last three. Yeah, I remember when I was doing an um, analysis on match of the day, and when he first came to Bournemouth, you're thinking, "Ooh, you could see it. There was pressing high. You see the rotations in midfield, and he sort of just went flat." 
And now it's come back. I don't know if the players lost a little bit of confidence. They still create chances, but normally they don't take them today or, or yesterday. They, they took them, didn't they? So mm. I still don't think Bournemouth are that great in terms of churning out results every week, but that'll give them so much confidence. Yeah, that will. It, it, it certainly will. Um, I suppose with Newcastle, it's just a case of um, getting through the... Uh, it's probably a good time for the international break. At least they can oh, have a little yeah. bit of a rest. A lot of their players won't be travelling because because they're injured and, and, and perhaps get a few of them fit and, and, and start again, Alan. Yeah, they uh, they would they just look shattered. I think even even Eddie looked tired after the game. You know his interview and when he said it was probably a game too much for us. Yeah, it's hard work sitting on that sitting on that bench. It's hard. Well, the pressure that they <laughs> go through, you know, the, the stress and everything else. It is so he he'll need a, he'll need a rest as well. So I would imagine he'll give his players that are fit a few days off, and the ones that aren't, they'll be in every day for treatment and hopefully ready in uh, in or a few of them are ready in a couple of weeks time. Can I switch it back to Bournemouth for a second? Solanke, how key is he yeah, for, for Bournemouth from a striker's yeah. point of view? Well, he, he scored a lot of goals in the championship, didn't he? And he but he's, he's, until this season, he's generally struggled to, to, to bag in the, in the top flight, but um, he's, he's got quite a few goals now. And um, I think it's, Six in Six. the Premier League, um, yeah. which is you know that's more than acceptable after the, uh, this part of the season. A um, couple of good finishes again um, at the weekend. So you've got to do it on a more yeah, consistent basis, hasn't well, it? Well, that's it. That's the next yeah, level. Can how, you do it consistently? How do you, as a striker, which you, you're in a team that not creating that many chances, what what do you do to keep? You just keep making the same you know runs as as if you were playing in a team that. That that was was good. You've got to you know you've got to keep gambling on where people will put the ball. If you're playing with players that are slightly less quality than than the, the great teams, um, then then the chances will be fewer. But you've you've just got to keep doing. It. I mean, I played like you know for Leicester and we were fighting against relegation, but. Um, you know, still managed to score. How many? How many? Oh, well, You've not mentioned how many, well, is it? Uh, well, get well, get it in, go on, get it uh, in. No, You've I, let I, him right down the <laughs> path here, Michael. I knew exactly what I was doing, I was fishing. <laughs> anyway, to take it back to him and his goal scoring, go on, tell us how much. No, thank you very much, Michael, I appreciate it. Um, I, will, I will take the bait. Um, my last two seasons, I think, were at uh, 23 and I finished second top scorer and then I won the golden boot the next season with yeah, 24 you so uh, yeah, you know it's you've just got to keep making those runs Micah and that's what, um, but, it, but it actually what it does it, it, I was thinking the other yesterday because Harry Kane scored an, a, another two goals for Bayern Munich that's 17 Bundesliga goals in 11 games which um would already beaten the Golden Boot winner in the Bundesliga last season. Um, and people are saying, well, it's suddenly his, his ratios got better. And then people will say, yeah, but the league's easier. I don't think it's that. I think the fact is he's now playing in a team that is dominant. So he's now doing the numbers that he probably would have done if he was playing for a team like Manchester City, City or Liverpool. Correct. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. Hundred percent right. Yeah, uh, what a what a player he is. As uh, that that's for sure. Um, it's all gone a bit like Spursy for Tottenham. Uh, I mean, they've had some rot. I mean, that the Monday night game against Chelsea was a killer for them, wasn't it? Not only did they lose the game and and all the madness of the disallowed goals, etc., but to have two players, uh, you know, shown a red card, um, so that suspensions. But to lose two of your <sighs> best players, Madison and Van der Ven, well. And, Certainly for this year, yeah. um, well, I mean, it, it it just felt like from being really euphoric and going really well to suddenly everything falls apart. And then they play at Wolves, um, and they were they were outplayed, but they nearly hung on. It, it was so difficult because, like you said, the feel good factor, and it just shows you, doesn't it? We was talking about can Spurs channel for the league, and we oh, challenge for the league, and we were saying. Look at the squad. We don't think the well, squad I think you were is saying, deep I think you enough. were saying that, 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 that Spurs are a better team without Harry Kane. I've <laughs> 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 lost a couple of games now, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. But I, I just think they, they lacked something. Obviously, I felt a little bit sorry for, for Eric Dyer because they actually did defend well for large parts of the game. But in the key moments when you've got Romero and Van der Ven and you've had that partnership... To come in, you got Davis and Dyer. It was so difficult. Yeah, I, mean, I just couldn't hold yeah, on. Obviously, I've got affinity towards Spurs because I played there. I was, yeah, I was like kind of gutted. Not just the fact that you lose a game like Chelsea, 
But then all the other things that happened and, and lose all, you know, two of your best players yeah, for a while. Yeah, but they've still, they're still, they're still had a really good start to the season. Oh, no, absolutely. Just, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, yeah. their fans are happy. It seems yeah. a really good camp. He's done a really good job. I, I, none of us expected them to challenge for the title at all, did we? I mean, no, we never of course said, we, 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 we none of us, I don't none think of any of us had him in the top four. So, uh, Well, no, exactly. Yeah, no. It, it, a re- an unbelievable season would have Spurs were worse. Spurs were to finish fourth or fifth, yeah. which might have to be the target for them now. Yeah, it's, it could be really quite tight for the the top four. It could mm. possibly be five clubs that go to yeah, the Champions right. League yeah. with yeah. this new format that's come in now, yeah. um, with the top countries um, and the point system, whatever it is. So there is a distinct yeah. possibility that fifth um, could make um, the Champions League. Well, I think we should mention Villa. Because, Brilliant. I mean, what wow, job he's done. that's another game that we couldn't see today that y- you would have watched, um, Alan. Yeah, what, what a job he's done. I mean, mm. unbelievable. They're, they're, all, they're all full of confidence, passing it around, the, moving the ball really fast. Watkins is uh, scoring goals. McGinn's playing some, some really good football. So, um, and, and they've had a couple of long-term injuries as well, which they've had to, uh, they've had to deal with. So mm. he's, done a, he's doing a fantastic job as mm. Unai Emery. They really are. They really are. It's going to be tight. And uh, um, the, I suppose Manchester United as well. It's interesting, isn't it? We're all saying Manchester United are really struggling. They're in crisis, etc. Do you know that the most form side in the Premier League with four wins in the last five? It's kind of sneaks up on you. Yeah, but they're not playing well out. If we're looking at what would you sooner do? Play well and lose or play badly and win? That's a very good question. You'd rather get the points on the board. I understand that, but it's the strikers are not scoring in the Premier League. You yeah, can't imagine keep relying they, on the I'm, defenders. Imagine when they start scoring. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. What do you, what do you make of um, um, Rasmus Hoyland, um, Alan? I, I, I like his movement. I think the goals will come. I mean, he, he certainly should have scored one yesterday. Yeah. Um, but he has scored um, five goals in, in the Champions League um, th- this season. So, w- which is, it's kind of the unusual way round to do it. But um, I feel a bit sorry for him. I feel, yeah. I feel as if, he, I feel as if, I'm not. He shouldn't be in the position he's in in terms of the fee that's being paid for him and the pressure that's on him. He should be a one that's in and out, using him as a sub, you starting him here and there, and it, they should have had a big hitter in there. So I feel a bit of sympathy for him, but I do, I do see there's a potential goal scorer in there. I think he'll be having sleepless nights because of what's happening to him in front of the goal in the Premier League. It looks as if he's going to be injured now, a hamstring injury, I think it was. But I think there's definitely something there. Yeah. And yeah. Can I just ask you what goes through your mind as strikers again? When you're having a bad spell? When you're having a barren No run. idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible, horrible <laughs> guy, <Amy. Horrible. laughs> You're horrible. <laughs> If you roll him across the six-yard box, Mike, I'll knock him in. No, what, no, a no. Stupid, what a stupid question that was to us two. What's the longest you've gone without scoring now? Come on, tell us. Six games. 30, 33 minutes. 33 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> How long? Uh, yeah. Six I think games. It was, I don't know. It's five or six in the Premier League, something like that. Although I did, I did start at Southampton when I started off at Southampton. I could. I mean, I went. I don't know. Maybe thirteen or fourteen at Southampton. Oh, when we were kids, obviously you break into the team. You're playing on the. I was, yeah, I was playing the right wing, so I, you know, I hardly ever did have a chance to score back then. <laughs> and, and of course, at, at Barcelona, when I, my last season, I was played on the wing there. But actually, when you're playing up front, it's a tad easier. I, have you noticed when he talks about Barcelona, they say they shoved him out on the wing? You know, <laughs> maybe because someone was better than him in a number nine position. Ever considered that? No, I think it was because Johan Cruyff used to like to play wide, and he, he saw a bit of me and him. Would never have guessed you played for Barcelona, would you? <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> he was actually still the best player in training every day when we when we, when we did hey, it. Hey, Micah, I got a I got a I got a bone to pick you. Someone rang me this week and told me to have a word with you. Oh, Ooh, Steve, go on. Steve Bruce. Oh, Steve Bruce! What Steve <laughs> Bruce said? Steve Bruce said to me, "Do me a favour, Alan. Tell Micah he's talking." <laughs> He's not. He well, he's talking that, for the book. He said the story that it's the story you told on the previous one about when John Terry came in. You had to go to play the three, but oh because he my. couldn't play. It. Ash, he said Ash. the reason. The reason he left you out. He says you were having a nightmare. <laughs> and the truth will out. He, he, 
He said you were so bad at, at right back, he just couldn't play you. Your knee was knackered. And he said another point he had to make, he says, he's, about his daughter, he said he spent 400 grand. He said he spent 200, not 400. <laughs> I've got the bills. Do you want to see the evidence? <laughs> 200 is quite a lot. <laughs> oh, 200 is all right, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Have you got a response? Oh, no, I've not got a response. No. I'll deal with it privately if you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Brilliant stuff. I love you, Brucey. I love you. Uh, Everton are on the roll. Ooh, got promising, isn't he's, got it? Them, he's got them playing. He's got he has them, yeah, Dyche. Yeah. I mean, it's it's his, it's his own style, tough to beat, mm. you know, yeah. getting the ball forward. Yeah. We um, expected this though, didn't we? we when did, they regrouped and got all the players Well, you know back. he knows what he's doing. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a trusted, you know, pair of hands, isn't he, at the, at the helm there. And he's... Um, I like. Him. I always him. like his interviews. He, oh, he's, like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's really good. He's, he's been there before. And often panics him when it wasn't going well. He was still. He was calm. He was telling everyone else to relax. And given given the situation Everton Football Club are in at the moment and have been for a while, he's the perfect man to have in there. He just yeah. calms the He just calms everything. And he's got them playing as you said. They're tough to beat. Might be direct, but they're, they're they're also playing some decent football, and um, it was a great result, another good result for them. It really was. Um, right, gentlemen, we know that Mike has got to rush off again. The world's busiest man. Um, <laughs> back to Mexico. Mexico. Oh, yes. yes. Back to for the second part of the league of their own road trip. Correct. Can't wait. A little bit of sun. Yeah. A bit of tequila. Lovely. In Mexico City or. No, this time we're going to Guadalajara. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Guadalajara. Uh, Guadalajara, yes. I bet you don't turn right when you get on the plane, do you? <laughs> Mind your business, Alan. <laughs> what did you say? You're in business. <laughs> um, um, we should finish, though. I know you've got a brush. So we'll finish with, um, as we customarily do it on the Monday episode, with um, the moment of the week. Um, John McGinn, and just... just seen it he did a celebration he did the like the i can't do it but the goggles thing um uh, on his eyes because um his nephew um has really bad eyesight and um has to play football with with goggles on um and so he thought he'd do it as a, a celebration nice touch you you know john mcginn He's, he seems like a great guy really top guy come down from scotland and I knew he was going to be a player straight away. Really works hard, good technique, good left foot. And he's just an all round great guy. I'm in a, a group with him as well. We have a bit of bantering. Can't tell you what we say in that group. Why not? Because it's class, <laughs> classified like, information. It's not, it's not like you to keep things back, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was so happy for him. He's just a top player. There was a, a spell where he was linked with Man United and Liverpool. His form dipped a little bit. But now he's playing at the, the he's, top of his He's got game. a goal in him as well. He has. I think he's playing the best football of his career. He's, he's unbelievable. I mean, he's so confident yeah. when he gets on that ball. He runs forward, scoring goals, passes. Yeah, he he's, he's looks really happy. I think the tough thing for him, he was always Jack Grealish's understudy. And as soon as Jack went, he thought, OK, I'm going to become different the positions, main man. Though, or do you mean in terms it just, of, in terms of the main man in the team and stature and whatnot. And they're really good mates, but... But they both have game, good games sometimes, and Grealish would get all the credit. Now he's getting a bit of a credit, which yeah. he fully well, deserves. He, he deserves it, and Absolutely. as do um, Aston Villa. Uh, Micah, run off, jump on the back of that <laughs> motorbike, get yourself to Heathrow. Happy flying, happy travels. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, and good luck on match of the day two tonight, Alan. Which will cheers, uh, guys. Already have gone out by the time um, people see this um, or hear this, and um, have a good show. Don't nick my analysis, please. <laughs> See a flight maker. Don't drink too much. I'll try not to. Remember, everyone likes a drink. No one likes a drunk. <laughs> Says Alex. <laughs> Says Alex. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, bye, everyone. Bye from me. Bye from me. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>